In the last century, the Melbourne Cup has only ever had three manufacturers. Uh, one in the UK and two in Australia. Um, that puts a lot of pressure on anyone who wins the right to make the cup. This is not just a cup, this is the Melbourne Cup. We have to get it right. The race that stops the nation. Everybody knows the Melbourne Cup. Over 150 years of history. This is the most important sporting event in Australia and to be part of it was, you know, our dream. This is a story of Australian experts. Gold miners, refiners, metal fabricators and jewellers. Brought together by ABC Bullion. Using modern technology and ancient skills to create one extraordinary trophy. The Emirates Melbourne Cup. The Melbourne Cup that is presented every year is a replica of the first Melbourne Cup. The replica has to be made with intolerances of tenths of millimetres. That's how accurate the VRC wants each Melbourne Cup to be. The Cup has over 44 pieces. It's worth $175,000 and is made of 18 karat gold. This is no ordinary trophy. From a technical perspective, it's one of the hardest trophies that you can possibly make. How do you make a Melbourne Cup? Well, first thing you gotta do is dig the gold out of the ground. We're at the main pit in Lake Cowell, gold mine, West Wylam. An hour from the centre of New South Wales. The gold starts in the rock. The geologists see what grade they got uh, and then those guys, I reckon, come along, they put their debt, their uh, nitrate in it. There's no one left in the pits. Shot firer goes down, he ties his shot in, ready to go, and then goes to the firing point, and then from there on, then he just presses the button, and away it goes. It's just a rumble. That gives you the 18 metre, what we refer to as the batter. Then it's mined out with the diggers, carted up to the crusher by these trucks, crushed through the crusher, then goes into the processing plant where it's crushed again until it gets to 15 microns, which is the same as talcum powder. The gold is leached out of the soil, put into a uh, furnace and smelted down to gold. And then it goes off to ABC Refinery. At the mine, the ore gets processed into a non-pure bar that we call Dore. A Dore bar looks like, if you like, a loaf of bread, but it's heavier. And, and worth gold. millions of dollars. The Dore gets brought to ABC Refinery in armoured trucks, and it gets purified. That bar goes through a multitude of processes, from melting to sampling to the entire refining process to give us four nines or 99.9% .9 pure gold. Then we need to make that into a usable form to create the Melbourne Cup. We're basically producing a block of gold about 12 millimetres thick that has to then be rolled to around one millimetre thick. To get down to that size, it's probably passed through the rolling mill 20, 25 times. A piece 280 millimetres is required. Now, in order to do that, our rolling mill is only 290 millimetres wide, so to get the piece of metal through the rollers, we've got around about five millimetres clearance. You're probably looking at around the forty to fifty thousand dollar mark for that sheet of gold, just just the main cup piece itself. At the end of the job, the cup has to weigh a certain weight, and we've got a one percent leeway basically either side. So all the thicknesses have to be perfect for when it reaches the trophy maker down the road.
So after all this process, the whole cup, the final jigsaw, it all sits on one person and his name is Sparrow. <laughs> Oh, I think I've been spinning for on and off for about 30 years. This is the hardest object I've had to spin. Melbourne Cup, most prestigious trophy in Australia. You don't want to really bugger it up. He's a national treasure. <laughs> He's a spinner and um, unfortunately it's a pretty unique skill um, these days. But the nice thing about Sparrow is he likes passing it on to the young people. Thanks to the Melbourne Cup, we were able to um, employ young Craig, an apprentice um, who's learning the skills from Sparrow. So he'll carry on the tradition. OK, well, this is your chuck. That screws on a, a bolster. You drop your blank in there. You bring your centre up to that end with a holder that holds the blank put the weight on it, and then start spinning. This is the first time this company's made an 18 karat gold cup for about 40 or 50 years. It's very difficult to work in gold. It's, it's, it's a hard metal, and um, when you turn it over a mould, it can split very easily. Within a second, you know, the metal could literally just pop out every which way and you're back to square one, fabricating the metal again and, and going through the process. Until that cup is finished, I definitely won't be sleeping well at night. <laughs> the most difficult part is spinning the bowl, but it also needs a lot of skill to, to um, put the handles on. It's, there's three different handles I have to make um, that have to be exactly the same. Probably roughly on each handle, I'd probably spend about eight hours, just filing one little piece of metal, checking it, filing it, checking it, filing it, checking it, to make sure. And then it's got to be polished, and then it's got to be engraved. And the base itself, which is um, spun on, on, on wooden chucks as well. So there's a lot of various components to, to, to making the trophy itself. Of course, taking on any project like this is terrifying. It's probably the biggest challenge that we've had, but um, we're just so proud that our, our little company's making it. The big opportunity for us was to prove to the VRC and the Australian public that we could be entrusted to make the Melbourne Cup. But more than that, for us at ABC Bullion, it was about making a cup that was 100% made in Australia. From the time that the Dore is mined out of the ground to its refining in Australia, right through to the point where the jewellers construct the cup. It's going to be completely made in Australia and it's amazing to have been part of that journey. A lot of people don't believe you. Why would the Melbourne Cup come from gold mine in West Island? Once they find out that it's actually true, I think they'll be on top of the world. Uh, we've got something local to cheer about. At least we know the gold's come from within Australia and it's, uh, it's hopefully won by an Australian horse.